got your headset on because I hear a whole bunch of feedback. Yeah, I got my headset on. All right. I still hear a whole bunch of feedback. What, your radio up loud or something? Was for a minute or two. Oh, okay, okay. All right, cool. You turned that bad boy down for me. I appreciate that. Yeah, I already did. <laughs> All right, I appreciate Otherwise, you'd hear it still. I appreciate that, man. All right, so we about to get this. Uh, we about to get this little thing started right quick. <laughs> and uh, we about to get. We about. We we just about to jump right into it. What's up, guys? Lockout men here in the truck on the thirty. Back again with another podcast interview for you guys. This gentleman, I hooked up with him way back in the day. I say about three, four years ago. Three. That's about right. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Three, four years ago, and uh, we we met when I had to go and pick him up. We uh. We made it up to the uh, terminal, and we've been cool ever since. Cool ever since. i like for you guys to put your hands together for my man, Sandy. What's going on, man? Oh, not too much. <laughs> all right, all right. Where you at right now, bro? Uh, just to the east side of Fargo, heading into North Dakota. Oh, yeah, in the North Dakota? What's it like? What's, what's the weather like up there right now? Uh, it's nice up here right now, man. It's about uh, 35 degrees. It, that's not nice, man. That's That sounds like hey, it's cold. Hey, compared to uh, what it normally is in Minnesota, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> you say comparing to what it's like in Minnesota. I, I feel and normally, normally what it's like, man. It's you know, like 10 degrees and zero, okay? I feel you, man. That, that North Dakota weather ain't no damn joke. It's almost like Ohio. I mean, yeah, it's it's like you get like four seasons in one damn day. Yeah, you can't get four seasons in one damn day to here. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Trust me, I bet. Trust me, I've lived here long enough. You can't get four seasons here. I feel it. I feel it. That's why they uh like like I heard a new the new ballpark over there. What is it? Uh, Target Field. Over there, yeah, Target Field. I, I heard the reason the way they built the ballpark was due to the fact of the weather. They got like what is it, an underground or over, or uh, a overground walkway to the ballpark or something like that. Yeah, as far as I know, they do. I haven't been over there to check it out yet. It's been driving too much, but yeah, they've got ways you can walk in there and sit around and still be fairly warm when it's cold outside. Okay, okay. This is. Do you know if the ballpark is a dome or is it is it open air? No, the uh, baseball field is open air. Oh, okay. Now the new now the new stadium. The what is that? U.S. Uh, the U.S. U.S. Bank Stadium yes. over in uh, yeah. over in St. Paul. That's Min- a Minneapolis. Oh, that's in Minneapolis. Oh, that is in Minneapolis. I thought that was over in yeah. St. Paul. No, it's in Minneapolis, straight by uh, Broadway and Hennepin, or right down there in the area. Oh, okay. Now, that's a dome, right? Yeah, that's a dome, and that one slides apart. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to be up there during the, uh, during the Super Bowl season when they had the uh, – I can't remember what number was, Super Bowl 50 – 51 or something like that but they 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 showed up and showed out at uh mall of america man they they was crazy all right man for, oh, yeah. the, for the people that uh for the people that need to know who i'm talking to man let the people know who i'm talking to who you are and where you come from uh my name is sandy nelson come from minnesota been here all my life been driving for the past five years and uh, I love driving. It's been same thing I've been doing for, like I said, five years. And mm-hmm. I used to cook before that at two degrees in culinary. Okay. And I've hit every single 48 state in this union. I haven't hit Alaska and Hawaii yet. Uh, you say yet. Okay. Okay, so wait, you you say five years, so just about the same amount of time that I've been in the game. So you came out in in twenty fifteen. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I used to drive for I used to drive for Stevens when I first came out. Stevens Transport out of Dallas. 
Okay. How how was uh did you did you get your license through them or you or you already had your license before you came on? I went to a school called Lone Star Trucking in uh, Houston, and then they automatically hired me into Stevens right out of that school. Stevens has something has something to do with that school as far as as far as sponsoring it or something like that, or it was just it was just well. What they have is they've, they had like five different places. There's one in uh, Colorado, there's one in F- Pittsburgh or uh, Pennsylvania, one in Texas that I know of, and there's a couple other ones that are out there. What they do is they, they have recruiters that are in uh, semi-colleges, you know, semi, semi-truck semi driving colleges, mm-hmm. and they recruit while they're in the college when you – are recruited by them, then they go. You go through the school. My training class is about three weeks long. You go from there right into Stevens Transport, and you're automatically hired by Stevens. Now they have contracts depending on what state you came out of and what area you're in. You have a year contract or two year contract or three year contract where you drive for them for one year, which is what our contract was from Houston. And after a year, you don't have to pay nothing. They pay the college for putting you through the college. Okay, okay. So, so you, so, so your train, you, you didn't have to come out of pocket uh, for your training, by the sound no. of it. No, okay. no, no, not out of my pocket. Okay, so I guess it is safe to say that this is a Stevens sponsored schooling, then, because Stevens. You had to sign a contract with Stevens in order to in in order in order to you know keep your license from not paying for it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. What was your uh, what was your experience over at Stevens? Oh, I like Stevens. The uh, only real thing I didn't really like about them, I mean, it, it was their pay. They were one of the lowest paying schools out there, you know, or trucking industries out there, you know, kind of like CR England. You go through one of their schools and they pay you just a dumb amount of money to drive their truck. Um, do, you, do you think they, you, you think they do that on purpose because you're a new driver and they trying to get away with it? Like try to well, take advantage if, of you? I don't know if it's so much that is the fact that they're the ones that are paying for the college that you're going through. Mm-hmm. So they try to keep the cost of what, it takes for them to, you know, to pay for that. So they don't pay you as much when you're first coming out of the college. So they're trying to recuperate or keep that cost low. That way they're not paying, you know, an outrageous amount of money to actually put you through school and have you drive their truck. So what about what about the pay, though? I mean... What what was the pay for for uh, for new guys coming out of coming out of straight out of school? <laughs> When we when we came first out of school and we started driving for them, our pay was uh, twenty eight cents a mile. Twenty eight cents a mile. Yeah. How can you? Live- we, Go ahead. Well, I, I <laughs> you know just as well as I do, most of the trucking companies were paying you know thirty five cents a mile back then. Right. Thirty because I started with uh, U.S. Express, but I I had my license. You know, I, I paid. You know, went to a school, but when I came to U.S. Express, they started me at thirty five ish, something like that. But then, yeah, before, see. but then when I when I left them, I was at close to forty. But yeah, but still starting off, like doing my like doing my training. I was only getting paid like four five hundred dollars a week, and that was uh, yeah. That's what we got paid too. And that was for that was for training. But then when I came on, they you know bumped it up to to yeah. the thirty. Like I said, about thirty five ish or something like that. But I got four, like I got four raises within the first year, and then the second year, yeah. the second year I got on with the bonus and. That that bumped me up to like somewhere in the forty atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, that was the same with us too. We got paid four hundred first 
two or three weeks that we're out training. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got bumped up to uh, 500, then it went up to 600. And then when we got our own trucks, they gave us 28. By the time I was done with that one-year contract, I was up to 33 cents a mile. Damn, though, 28 cents, man. That's... Yeah, it's a little harsh, but, it, it, you know, the way they run their company, you know, you're out there. You know, you're not just, you know, driving for five days and then going home for two. You can't drive. You, you, you can't drive for that and go home for two if you're making 28 cents a mile. You can't no, do that. you can't. No. You, you can't do that. You got a constant. They, I, I think they take advantage of it because they know that we're not going to ask them for like, yo, I need home time like every other week. Like they, like they actually say in their, in their briefing yeah. with, with the recruiters. Oh, you can just do 14 days out and then you can go home for two. But at 28 cent a mile though. Yeah, no. No, you can't do that. That's what I said. I know. I worked for him for a full year. By the time I got done, I was doing 33. I decided I was going to go to a different company and drive. And I did go to a different company. I drove for them for a little bit. And I didn't like the way that they kind of operated things because they did theirs a little bit more differently than Stevens. Stevens paid you for, if you, if you had to, you were driving down the road and you hit a snowstorm and you had to shut down, they paid you for weather shutdown. Oh, okay. Okay. A lot, yeah, of, you companies, know, if you a lot of companies down, don't do that shit, but yeah. No, uh-uh, they don't do that at all. I mean, even even when you get breakdown, breakdown pay, mm-hmm. when you get breakdown, most companies say, well, you know, we'll pay you after 24 hours. Steven's paid you right away. So there is some there there is some pros and cons with the company, though. Oh, yeah. Just, but it was one of the better companies so far that I actually have worked for. Oh, okay. Other than the fact that the twenty eight cent was kind of what about yeah. So, other than that, so the um so the schooling, the schooling and everything. What was your experience doing the schooling? How many how many of you was how many of you was there, and how many actually made it through? <laughs> we started out at about ten people that first started in there the first first day or two. Okay. By the time we went to Stevens after the three week period, there was four of us. Wow. What was what was what happened? What happened with the six? You know. Uh, most of them didn't like one thing or another about driving truck. Whether it was the trainers that were showing us how to, you know, actually drive the trucks, or if it was the, you know, they they couldn't comprehend enough knowledge to pass written tests. Oh, okay. okay. You know, a couple of them, a couple of them dropped out because they went and took the written tests and kept taking two or three of them, and you had to not, you know, you had to have your written test done before you went up to Stevens. Oh, okay. And their class was only three weeks long, so you had to they be had able to, to perform they, and do stuff in order to go there. They had to pretty much cram everything, everything yeah. about driving a truck in a three-week period. So you, yep. so you got your, so you was able to get your permit while you was at school, or you had to have your permit before you went to the school. No, I got my permit while I was in school. Oh, okay. okay. So I took all, all, I took all five tests, and then I took the extra two for tanker and double triple. You know, just because I felt like it. Just, just add, just adding on, just adding on to the opportunities out here. What made you? What, yep. made, you, what made you go down to? You from Minnesota, but. You went to Houston. Did did they did they get you down there, or did you, uh, did you go down there? Like, did you pay for your own way down there? Yeah, I paid for my own way down there because I was already in Houston when I was down there. I had a buddy of mine that lived in Houston. I used to work a job before that that we got our uh, winters off and we got unemployment. So during the winter, I said, "Screw this! I'm going down to Texas because." It's cold up here in Minnesota during the winter time. Yeah, it's yeah, it is beyond cold. I, I, I kid you not. If if you guys, if you guys, want to know how the winters is up in Minnesota, hit me up. Just ask me. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask me, man. I will let you know. All right. So, man, what what did you what what did you wish you knew 
about about trucking before you before you got into it. What, what was that? What was that about trucking that you wish you would have known before you before you jumped into it? Oh, uh, not much really. I wish I. The only thing I really really wish I knew was the the fact that I actually liked it. Otherwise, I probably would have been driving truck most of my life. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean. I mean, when I was driving, you know, back and forth to work, I'd always think to myself, man, I wish these trips were a little bit longer. It wasn't until later on it dawned on me, and that was while I was in Houston that I, you know, said, you know what, I'm going to do a different career because I feel like doing something else, and I've always liked driving, so I decided to find a place down there to, you know, study on how to drive a truck, and that's when I found, you know, Lone Star College, and went through their plan and then got hired into Stevens. And when I got in the truck and started driving, I was like, yeah, man, now this is something I should have done a long time ago. You said it, you, you know, you said it, man. That's just like me when I got into it. I was like, damn, I should have, I should have started this like back in my thirties, maybe my twenties or something like that. Maybe yeah. I would be, I would be in a better, in a better position. But you said you was a cook before then, before you got in the truck. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was uh, 17 years in the business, five years in catering. I went to uh, college for it, four years of college, a uh, regular associate's degree in culinary arts and a bachelor of science in uh, culinary management. I got burned out doing that. You know, uh, you're working seven days a week, 12, 12 14 hours a day. Man, take a minute. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. And it's hustle, hustle, hustle. It's not, you know, like I'm sitting behind the wheel right now driving down the road. You know, there's it's stress upon stress. Well, you don't think you you don't think trucking is is a stressful is a stressful job. It is to a point. I mean, you know, most of your major cities, Chicago, Atlanta, you know, L.A., New York, and all that stuff. It's stressful going through there. Because you have to pay attention to not only what you're doing, but everybody else. Because they don't pay attention to what the hell they're doing. Exactly. You know, in in cooking, you have to pay attention to the what you're doing. You have to also pay attention to what your people are doing. You also have to pay attention to that. But it's a nonstop moving thing. So you're constantly doing something. Whereas in a truck, you're driving down the road. Yeah, you pretty much driving on the world, making sure that uh, you getting getting the point A to point B safe, man. Take a moment to yeah. think, take a moment to think about the different aspects of being a truck driver, though, in trucking industry today. You know what I'm saying? What you like or what you don't like about it? Oh man, you have to open that kind of can of worms, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I had to go I'll put it to you. That. I'll put I'll put it to you this way. As a truck driver, okay, we not only drive these trucks, but we also are the security for the loads that are in the back. And when they first tell you you're driving a truck, okay, you got 70 hours you can drive per week. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily a truth. No, and you are and you can drive 70 hours a week, yes. But in actuality, I'm driving a truck 70 hours and I'm still in the truck 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pretty much. I still have to provide security for the back of this truck even when I'm not driving it, which means I'm still what they call off-duty, but not really off-duty. I'm still on duty. And we don't get paid for that. I was just about to say that we don't. I mean, we we pretty much we're pretty much responsible for the contents of this truck damn near 24 hours a day even when we're off. We're still exactly. we're still responsible. So like if we do a exactly. 30, if we do a 34, let's say if we go home and we do a 34 and we got a load that, you know, that don't deliver until like the next day or the day after that, we got to find some way into securing the truck. Yep. You know, we got to find some way into doing that. And uh, and we're still responsible for whatever happens to the truck. That's right. 
That's so true. we're not really off duty. We're not. I mean, we're not. But uh, and we don't never get paid for it. We now, you know, I think it, it, so, there are some companies out there that will compensate you for your time, but you really, you really and truly got to look for it, though. You you got you got to really like dig deep into into this trucking field in order to find that comfortable yeah. home. Yeah, well, think about this too, though. We drive, like I said, we drive seven days a week. Okay? In this industry, the people that run the inner part of the industry, the corporate part and the company part, Mm -hmm. they get to go home every night. Every night. And they get to go home every weekend. Every weekend. While we're just sitting in this truck, whether we're driving, or whether we're watching the load to make sure that nobody steals it. <laughs> we don't get time off until they actually say something like, well, wow, you've been out there for a long time. Huh? Would you like time off? Well, yes, I would, sir. I'd like to have plenty of time off. Well, yes. let's see. You've been driving for about four weeks, so we'll give you three days to four days off. And some of, the, some of them don't even do that. They uh-huh. some of them don't even do that. You can go, you can go as long as six, seven. You could damn near drive a whole damn year without taking no damn time off, and and the fleet manager would would still treat you the treat you the lightest. You know what I'm saying? They would. Yes, still, I do. They they would still treat you the lightest. Like yo, um, you would think like you 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 sitting behind the board, you sitting behind a computer, you. You go home every day. You, if yep. you're married, if you're married, you get your pussy every day. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me for that. Yeah, you, 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 you get, get your, to see your kids you every your, day. You get to see your kids every day. You you get to get your shit wet every day. No, I like that. But you come back to work and you see this truck driver that been out five five or six months, seven months. I mean, wouldn't it be yep. like kind of like courteous to be like, "Yo, bro, you you okay out there? You you want to take some time off or something like that? You wanna you wanna uh you wanna take a week off or something like that? You've been running for me for you know for you know for four months straight. You you want to take some time off? You you would think they would say that, but pfft, no, no, they don't. They they don't. don't. They expect you to be able to uh, be a machine that you're out there driving all the time. Man. Even after a year, man, there's a lot of companies that you drive for. You drive for a year, and they say, "Oh yeah, you get a week's vacation and a week's worth of pay for that vacation," but you don't actually get to be able to take that week off. Some companies just pay you for the vacation days to keep you running. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the other companies you've been with. Um, I'm, you say you only been with Stevens for a year. Uh, what was well, it? at that point in time, I was a, uh, I was there for about a year, and then I decided I want more pay. Okay, so you jumped from and I went to J and R Shugo. Okay, okay, J. That's where we actually met at. We met at J and R Shugo. I think, I think your first day, your first day back with J and R Shugo was the first time that I met you, right? Yep, that's when you gave me a ride over to the yard in uh, Wisconsin. To get the truck that I was supposed to be picking up instead of picking up a yard right in there, oh. you know, new on the yard. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt, uh, Matt was the one was our fleet manager at the time. <laughs> yeah, now yeah, that's right. Now let me tell you. Now you guys already know that I I had no problem with my fleet manager. As a matter of fact, Matt was the reason why I pretty much stayed as long as I did. Wolf J and R Schwugel. Now, yeah, uh, Matt was a good guy. Yeah, Matt was a Matt was a good guy. Now he he could be an asshole at times. I mean, you know, he really he really didn't like getting on the phone. I can tell you that much. He he is Don't be not, hated it. he he was not a talker at all. I mean, you get on. Oh. He was like he was like uh, a point A to point B type of person. Get him on the phone. Get what you needed to say. And hang up. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that was about it. The other lady, the other lady, one of the uh, lady drivers, she was like, "Well, I, I don't like him because he's not, 
he's he's not a people person. I was like, well, yeah, okay. As long yeah, as he was a, a people person, you know, but he just he did his thing his way. Exactly. He's what, still a people person. What was your What was your experience with uh, J and R Swoogle? Oh, well, the first nine months I worked for him was all right because I worked for him for about nine months, and it wasn't too bad. Um, they, you know, I, uh, for some reason they had a hard time trying to figure out how to uh, do load assignments. Mm-hmm. You know, for some reason, a uh, load assignments, Matt was fairly good at being able to give them up, but giving up the correct ones at correct times where you actually had time to run some of them, um, he had a difficult time with. Okay, okay. Other than that, it wasn't a bad company. Now, J and R. Swoogle really, really and truly wasn't a bad company, but... I think when they made the acquisition to uh to uh what's that super service when they, yeah. when, they when they took when they took over super service Yeah, I was gone during that time. That's when I I, I was there. I was there a little bit during that time, but I, I think the quality I think the quality from from there pretty much diminished. Because, like I said, the fleet manager that I got after Matt was just garbage. I'm just going to be honest. Hey, if you yeah. if if you listening, I'm telling you, you was garbage. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, Matt never Matt never messed with my money. He never messed with my home time, and he never messed with my miles. As a matter of fact, it was all the opposite. He gave me all of that that I wanted. You, yeah, like I said, he was good at that stuff. Yeah, you. You, I, I don't know what was your problem. <laughs> I don't know. What, yeah, really? I, I don't know what was the matter with that fleet manager. All right, man. So, uh, I got a. So things sort of went downhill with J and R Schwugel, man. You sent me some pictures. Tell me, uh, tell me about. Well, that was. Uh, tell me about this. That was incident, afterwards. Man. I, I went to Stevens right after that again. Back oh, down went, there. Oh, they, okay. Okay. And they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. You know, that old, they gave me a brand new truck. They gave me uh, more money, and they wanted me to train students out of there. So that's basically why I went back to them. Okay, so what was the, tra- what was the training? Well, since you was a trainer, how long you was a trainer for? Uh, I was a trainer for about six months. How was the experience with that? I liked it, uh, but I also found out that... Uh, I don't. I'm not really a uh, person that likes to have other people in my truck for long periods of time. What was the what was the, what was the longest that you had a, a trainee on the truck? I'd be six weeks. Six weeks. Did you did you train females? No. What? At that point in time, when they were doing it, they didn't let they didn't let males train females. What? <laughs> Would if now they do if if there was a female that needed to be trained and you was available, would you would have took that female? Yeah, I would have had no problem doing that. Because right. I know how to separate. I know how to separate. You know when they need their time to do whatever. That's you know, I just step God. out of the truck and said, "All right, do whatever you need to do. I'll, I'll be I'll be I'll be gone for a little while." That's what I'm talking about, man. Because some of these some of these male trainers, man, they they. They they blur the lines between training a uh, training a female and and trying to do some extra shit with them, man. What's well, your... that's because they're that's because they're six sons of bitches. <laughs> I mean, they are. Let's face it, man. They're sick. I mean, like I said before, I, and I talked about this before in a, in a, in a past podcast, but I say never let nobody mess with your money and. And yeah. try, and trying to get a relationship with 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 a female trainee because, you know, I guess you haven't you you haven't had none in a while or whatever whatever you know you let that interfere with 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 your money. I, I, yeah. I don't understand that. I don't understand it. All right, so 
being that you trained out, uh, what what was what would be some advice that you would give to the the trainees that's coming into uh, that's coming into trucking and and going out with a trainer? Well, see, the advice I gave my students were, you know, um, listen to the trainers, pay attention to what they have to say, don't believe everything they say, because they're, you know, a lot of trainers are bullshit artists. Mm -hmm. They'll hype themselves up, make them sound like, you know, they're the ultimate driver out here. They're not, you know. I, you got to pay attention to what they have to say and the information they have, but not all the information is going to be correct. You know, my, when I was training, I didn't hurt. Uh, you break, you breaking up. Barely Sandy. trained me. He, yeah. Yeah. You, you breaking up a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Must be where the area, man. Oh, damn oh yeah. Oh, damn it. What you down? You down to one bar? Uh, I'm down to a couple. Oh, shit. <laughs> I got all oh, that rust area is 90 miles away. <laughs> uh, so you that we're going through a break up break area where you're going through one from one tower to the other tower. You know, right? And it's kind of like spread out between the two. That's where that's where you lose your 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 connection between. You know, the spaces between towers, I think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right. Um, all right, well let's uh let's let's uh let's hope hopefully uh, I can get through without losing you, but uh let's let's talk about these pictures that you sent me, man. You went back yeah, to was, uh, you went back to J and R Schugel. And, yeah, I went uh, back to Shugel because they offered me a couple of different things and I wanted to drive out of Minnesota again. Okay. Now I had a route that was from Minnesota to California and California back. Right, that was the triangle route. Yep, and and it was it, it worked out perfect because all I did was drive into California, picked up, dropped off, picked up somewhere in a, another place, California, and then drove right back to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, while I was driving them, they gave me a international truck and had probably thirty thousand miles on it when I first got it. Okay. And it started having issues right off the bat. Like it would disengage in seventh gear as I was going around a uh, cloverleaf corner, mm -hmm. and, it, and it would disappear. You, you'd hit the throttle again, and the gear would not be there. Mm -hmm. It would not would not come back. And I kept telling them about this problem. And another t uh, a couple other problems that I was having with that truck was that. Every once in a while, it would uh, act like it was missing, or the engine would shut down and turn right back on again mm -hmm. as I was driving down the road. And I kept telling them that there's something wrong with the truck. Okay. You know, on one of those faithful trips back from California, I was in Wyoming crossing over the border into Nebraska mm -hmm. when I heard a boom. And I figured it was a tire. You know, you hear that kind of boom, you're like, oh man, dang, I just blew a tire. So I had to get out of this little construction area. Where as soon as I got out of it, I pulled the truck over right away. Because, you know, running those super singles, you can't run them like, you know, duels. You have to pull over right away. So I pulled over and noticed that there was a little bit of smoke pass by my passenger window and said, the hell is that? Mm -hmm. I got out of the truck, walked around the front of the truck to the passenger side, and... The rear tire on the drives was fully engulfed in flames. Wow, I'm looking at it too, man. That shit's crazy. So I quick jumped back in the truck, and I started grabbing a couple of things I could grab. I grabbed my telephone, of course. My headset was already on my head. I grabbed my jack because it was a little chilly out, and I heard a second boom which would have been the second tire. And right after that is the fuel tank. Wow. That's right. This, At that point, this was, a yeah, reefer, go ahead. This, this was a reefer trailer that, that blew up too, right? Uh, I just burned to the ground, burned, burned the front end of the reefer trailer. I only burned about what? Maybe a quarter of the trailer. 
Wow. So at that point in time, I decided, ain't nothing in this truck worth dying for. And I jumped out of the truck, ran up this little hill and started taking pictures. And that's the first one you got is that one. Yeah, I'm I'm scroll I'm scrolling through now. I'm up at the part where the uh fire the firemen came and uh started putting the fire out. How long how long was it how long it was on fire? Because by the looks of it, it was it was on fire for quite a while. How long was it before the uh fire department got there to uh to put the fire out? It was about twelve to fourteen minutes. Easy. Wow. Well, it was on I eighty. There's a there was a town right back from where I where I just came from, the edge of Wyoming. There, man, it, and this this fire, it, this I mean, this, this goes to show you how. I hate to say this, but this goes to show you how a piece of crap that these trucks are made, man. That fire just, just, just. I'll ate put it, it up. to you this way: when I got out and started taking those pictures until the end, the last picture that shows the truck all the way burned down. It took, uh, I think it was uh, 24 or 26 minutes wow. for that truck to do that in the time period. It took 24 to 26 minutes for that truck to start on fire to burn all the way to the ground. Wow. What you was hauling? I mean, it looked like you was on a load. So what you was hauling? <laughs> what, what is that? Blue diamond. Blue diamond almonds, man. Almonds. God damn it, man. <laughs> I, guess they got, I, I guess they got re-roasted, huh? <laughs> yeah, they did get roasted, man. This, oh, man, this this is so crazy. So so I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the truck. How was you? You had your license. So you, everything, gone. TV. Clothes, crop yeah, 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 yeah. Everything that I had in there. I had TV set in there, PlayStation 4, surround system for it, subwoofer, you know, crock pots, microwave, you know, uh, clothing. You know, I had a lot of stuff in the truck. You know, it was close to $5,000 worth of stuff in that truck. Was, did, now let me ask you this. Did you, did you have, did you, have insurance on on the stuff that that you had in that you had in your truck. No, um, insurance companies will not insure a truck if you're a company driver. All right, because, because the company company has insurance on the truck. They both have you know comprehensive and liability. Now my now I I was a victim of a of a robbery about 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 a year and a half ago. Somebody somebody jumped up in my truck and actually stole my my gear bag, my my computer, cameras, uh GoPros, hard drives. I say maybe about about four about 4000, about 4000 plus uh, give or take, Damn. and I I use my uh, I use my home insurance to to you know to cover it, but they only you know my home insurance only covered fifteen about fifteen hundred dollars, which which sucked. But but yeah. I, I did go and get like insurance, like like uh, I think it's called equipment insurance or some shit like that, but. All the equipment that I got, like everything that's in my truck, as far as equipment goes, my jewelry, uh, uh, my computers, TVs, anything equipment-wise, I got insured through uh, through a separate insurance. So if somebody come in here and steal my shit or something like that, I can claim that uh, on my own personal insurance. Now let's flip. Have, let's flip to. The, you'll have to get back to me on that one and tell me where I can get oh, that. Okay, I, I'll, I'll I actually that. want to do that because I'll do that. I'll do that because we because like I said when that, when my bag was stolen and and my comp I mean not you know of course the company didn't do nothing but uh of course. but um but um my my home insurance like I said it was it only covered it only covered fifteen hundred dollars so I, yeah know, I I was able to put just just pay on my credit card and just you know get my setup back uh let's flip to the uh let's flip to the aftermath man uh 
you uh you 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 back at JNR Schwugel, you you um truck is destroyed. Did they did they put you in another truck? Did they take care of you? What what was the aftermath? Uh I took two weeks off. And uh just to just to deal with the fact that I lost all that all my shit in that truck. Um, I, I talked to them about it and they said, you know, uh, write down and make, make a list of everything that you lost in the truck and we'll put in something with our insurance company and see what they can do about it. It roughly took them three months to actually say something about it. And that took a little bit of action on my part in order for them to pay me some of the money that I lost in that truck. Wow, and that and that took uh, getting a hold of uh, Channel Nine News and putting them on the news. What? Yeah, I, <laughs> I kept calling them and asking them, you know, uh, hey man, you guys gonna give me some money for that? Because you know, I know your insurance should cover that because you got liability, so they should cover anything that's inside that truck. Mm-hmm. You know, and I gave you a list and how much it was going to cost, and I already know about. Uh, you know, uh, depreciation on things. I said, I'm, you know, fine with that. You know, and they're like, oh, well, yeah, we haven't, we haven't gotten back. The insurance hasn't gotten back to us and blah, blah, blah. And that was every single time I called them. I found the, so one oh day, my God, I found the article. This is, so one day, oh, go, yeah, it's, it's on Channel 9 News, man. I found the article, man. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that, uh, that you went to Channel 9 News. Yeah, when I went to them, and this is the this is the this is the goofy part about the whole thing. When I talked to them, when I first talked to them, I called them up and said, "Hey, man, you know, I I don't know if this is a story or not, but you know." And I told the Channel Nine news guy that uh, you know, I told him my story. He's like, "Oh yeah, you got a story?" He says, "When you want to air it?" I said, "When you want to air it?" And uh, he says, "Well, he says I'll call up Shugol to find out their side of the story." And then uh, I'll get a hold of you, and then we'll set up a time to do it. I said, all right, that sounds good to me. Highway in Nebraska, a Minnesota oh, truck driver's hold on, right livelihood quick. I'm was I'm gone in article. an instant. He was driving home from California right. when his vehicle caught fire. Fox Sides' Maury Glover joining us now with more on his story. Maury? That's right. For the last four years, Sandy Nelson has not only driven a semi, he's lived out of it as well. And he watched as both his livelihood and his belongings went up in smoke at the same time. When I retrieved it out of there was my headset because I needed to use phone dial 911 to let him know. Oh, Other than the clothes on his back, Sandy Nelson <laughs> can hold the rest of his belongings in his hands. Terrible. I mean, now I kind of actually know how some people feel when they get their houses robbed. You know, I mean, they lose most of their stuff that they had in that, in that apartment or in their house. Nelson was driving a semi truck full of almonds from California to Minnesota back in May when the truck started on fire as he crossed the border from Wyoming into Nebraska. Nelson, who basically lives out of the cabin sleeper, was only able to grab a handful of items before the truck burned to the ground. Well, all he could do was watch in horror as almost everything he owned went up in flames. Wow, man, that's crazy. I ain't know this. So after, because, you know, you sent me these pictures before. Yep. You you sent me these pictures when I was talking to you before because I was I was in shock that that, that had happened to you. I was kind of hoping that you had some yeah. video. But I was in shock that that happened to you, but I was also glad that nothing happen to you you see what i'm saying i mean you know every, yeah. everything everything in there can be replaceable but it was it was good that you you being the professional truck driver that you are that you actually caught that and you was like hey let, let me pull this motherfucker over to the side right quick and and see what's up you know what i'm saying something told you yeah. to do that my yeah, my, man. Listen, you gave me the pictures, and I actually put it up on my social media. Don't you know that I actually got a call from, uh, I got a call from HR asking me to take the pictures down. Yeah, well, when I put it, I put the pictures up on uh, JNR Shugel's website. 
and I put it up. I put it up on. I, I put it up on their website, and I put it up on my social media. Being that you know, I was pretty much, I I was pretty much the face of J and R Swoogle at that time. But yeah. they they actually called me and they say, uh, "Hey, lockout man, can you?" Uh, uh, we know that you got pictures of of the fire of one of our trucks. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's my guy Sandy. You know, I was just, you know, I posted a picture to let you know to let these drivers know the dangers that they could be possibly facing while driving the trucks and what they can yeah. and what they can do to you know protect themselves. Well, they told me due to the invested in quote air quotes air quotes. Due to the investigation, we would like for you to take the pictures down. And I was kind of like, why? I mean, you know, I mean, don't you guys have the same pictures? I'm sure he gave you guys the same pictures. Why would they had all the same pictures? Right. Why would you? <laughs> why would you want to? Why would? Why would I want to hide that? What, what? What was the big deal? She wouldn't go into too much detail on it, and I did. At at one point, took the pictures down, but of course I put them back up. But yeah, they told me to take the pictures down. So in this article right here, it says uh, it took about August. Actually, how long was the time that that they reimbursed you, and did they reimburse you for everything? Well, they didn't reimburse me for everything. I'll tell you that. And uh, that's the funny part of the whole story is when Maury, the reporter, got a hold of them to find their part of the, their side of the story, I had a phone call about 15 minutes after Maury had talked to them by the head of safety asking me, what is this, what, what will it take to get this whole thing to go away? And uh, the, the, now we we talking about the head of safety. We we talking about the big man. We talking about Don, yep. right? Don Smith, yep. So he. Yep. So when did when did he started to come into the picture? Because I'm sure you was dealing with other people other than him. I dealt with him most of the time. Oh, okay. I, I didn't deal with, I didn't really deal with anybody else, just him, because he is the head of safety right. for Jan Arshugo. Okay. Okay. And uh, he's the only one that I ever called about any information. And he told me some bullcocking story about how the truck actually started on fire and burned down. All right. So let me ask you this. Okay. So they investigated. In, in well, your, Google didn't investigate. Okay, uh, the fire department investigated. No, no, the insurance company did. Okay, so in your opinion, in your opinion, uh, what do you think started, and then what was the official word on what started? Well, in my opinion, I mean, I started looking up to find out if there were any recalls on that truck. Okay. I found out that there was five recalls on the international trucks from 2018, 2019. That was a 2019 international. They had five different recalls. One of them was the exhaust falls off. Uh, one of them was, uh, an electrical problem due to the hood vibrating on a, an electrical wire. So it would short shit out. The third one I found out was, uh, that the, cooler on the fuel pump would go out and the fuel pump would heat up and it could cause a fire. Okay. And the third one was that, or the fourth one, sorry, was that, uh, there was a eaten clutch plate that's in the transmission and they had tendencies of breaking and blowing up. Okay. And the fifth one was, uh, I'm trying to remember, and I don't even remember what the fifth one was. But the fourth one seemed logical to me because if the Eaton clutch plate blows up, mm -hmm. which would account for all of my dash lights in my dashboard lighting up at the same time, mm -hmm. right before I stopped the truck. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, a flat tire wouldn't do that. Okay. 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 Now, if that blew up, it might have shrapneled out a little bit of the transmission. Transmission fluid is hot at this point in time. I've been driving for a while. Okay. If it hits the exhaust, it can start on fire. Okay. Now, my theory is that it, that's most likely the logical possibility is what happened. The clutch plate blew up, blew part of the little piece of the transmission off, enough for the transmission fluid to leak out. It sprayed across the exhaust, which was already hot, which is right by the rear tire. Okay. And caught the rear tire on fire. Okay. Now, Don Smith told me, and this is what he told me, I have no real way of finding out what the investigation actually said. Mm -hmm. But his version was that the tire went flat and because the brakes on my truck were hot mm -hmm. and I didn't use my brakes that much in order for them to get hot. If I was coming through the mountains and I had to use them while I was going down hills, it's a possibility they might have gotten hot enough to melt the tires. I don't know about starting them on fire. But he said that the tire came off the rim, fell onto hot brakes, mm -hmm. and started on fire, which is what burned the truck down. Now, if you look at that first picture I took, and you zoom in on the rear tires, you can plainly see that the rear tire mm -hmm. is still attached to the rim. All right, you say the first. So there's no way it could have come off the rim, falling onto hot brakes, which would have had to have come underneath the rim of the t rim of the truck in order to get onto the hot brakes to begin with, because there are drum brakes on that truck. All right, so you say drum brakes, remember? So you s and start on fire. All right, yeah. There's, so that okay, was so that there's the tire. Okay, I see the tires right there. And, they still and the tire, if you look at it close enough, the tire is still on the rim. Yeah, they still attach. Woo! Man. All, 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 all that. All that. And that, that took how that took how long? When when did the when did the situation start it up until August? What was that? Uh three months, two months, five months, a year? Three about three and a half months. Three and a half months. Yeah, so you, for them to actually send me or call me on the phone and ask me, you know, how much would it take in order to go to make this go away? But that, like I said, that was right after I had gotten a hold of Channel Nine News, and they got a hold of Shugo to find out their version of the story. Wow! And it wasn't a few minutes later, ten to fifteen minutes later, after Maury had talked to them guys at Shugo that. He called me up, Don Smith called me up and asked me, you know, how much would it take to make it, make all this go away? How? So it took me getting on the news in order to get paid. Wow. Uh, was, was you still, even after all of this, you know, the news, the fire, uh, was you still an employee with, uh, with J&R Schwugel? No, they fired me. Wait, because of the fire? <laughs> no, it was something else. Oh, oh, they, uh, oh, okay. Uh, was it? I'll tell, was, I'll, was it? I'll tell you what it is afterwards. I ain't gonna tell yeah, you right I now. I got you. I got you. You, you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> 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 wow, wow. So, uh, wow. That's that's one hell of an experience. That's wow. I mean it, it, and you said they didn't take they they didn't cover at least as much as as what you has actually lost. Oh no, he, they see you know he just kept telling me, well you know depreciation depreciation. I said Don, I already told you I know about depreciation. You know, wow, I know how my TV set was. I know how all, all everything that I had in my truck was. Wow, and I didn't mind that, but the fact that they. Paid me like one third of what I had actually had in that truck to begin with. 
still didn't compensate for anything. How did you? How did you? Uh, did? How did you get home from from the fire? Oh well, they had me. Uh, the police officer that uh, first showed up gave me a ride to a hotel. Okay. And then I stayed uh, two nights at the hotel before they found a driver that, that was coming by who was that would pick me up and give me a ride back to New Ulm Yard. And from New Ulm, how did you get? Well, being that you stay in Minnesota, what 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 you do? Just they just gave you a cab. They gave you another truck to go home, or what? How how did you go? No, I. I well, it, New Ulm wasn't that far. It's a hour and forty five minute drive from where I live, just inside the Twin Cities. I live on the outskirts, you know, suburbs of of uh, Minneapolis. So it only took like an hour and three quarters to drive. So my car was parked at J and R Shugo. Okay, so that's that's good. That's that's good. But as as I said before, Sandy man, I I am happy that you is all right i mean you know you was able you know right now as of now you're you're pretty much happy where you at and uh and you are driving again so obviously you know getting fired from jnr shrugal didn't hurt as bad but um but um but you no. are but you are driving again and you're here to tell the story bro you are here yeah i know i'm happy that's that's the happiest thing i'm, I'm most happy about is the fact that I had brains enough or click enough to jump out of that damn truck before the uh, fuel tank started on fire. Exactly, exactly, man. All right, man. It's there. <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So what? So out of this whole experience, what have you learned from this whole experience that you can give to other drivers that's coming into the game? If you have any problems whatsoever with your vehicle, with your truck, with your trailer, with your whatever, on that nice little, if you're using Omnitrax Qualcomm or if you're using PeopleNet or you're doing whatever, whenever you log something and you find that there might be a little glitch with something in your truck, make sure you put it in there or and and type them a separate message telling them that there's something wrong with your truck. Because if you don't, they won't do anything at all to fix your truck, nor will they look at it. All you're doing is covering your ass because if your truck burns to the ground and they can easily say something stupid like, well, we didn't know there was anything wrong with the truck. Wow. That's 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 awesome right there, man. And on that note, we gonna we we gonna end it right there on that note, man. That's this that was an awesome story. Good interview. I appreciate you coming on, bruh. I appreciate you coming oh, on. Thanks for having story. me, man. I appreciate all that. This is Sandy, y'all. Sandy, give it up for my man Sandy. <laughs> Yo, if you guys interested in coming in and talking to me and sharing a story like my man Sandy did, get at me at lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com or you can hit me up in the DM over in Instagram. Y'all, y'all, y'all know it. I mean, or leave it in the comments and y'all can get at me and I'll bring you guys on and y'all can chop it up. Sandy, man, I do appreciate you uh, coming on. Make sure you get to where you need to get to safe, man. And uh, I'll come back at you in the, uh, in another video, man. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm almost to my uh, stop right now where I'm going to be sitting down for 10 hours, taking a break, and starting the deliveries tomorrow. That'll work. That'll work. You take it easy, bro, and I'll talk to you later. All right, man. Talk to you later. Peace, man. Peace out, bro. That was my man, Sandy. Man, what? Wow, that that fire. Let let me come back for a minute. Let me let me let me come back for a minute. That fire on 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 that truck. I've seen many of truck fires before, and I I think that is one of my one of my fears of the truck catching on fire, especially losing everything in 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 the tr in the truck. And and the fire, as you guys seen in the pictures, the fire just just engulfed the whole truck. 
So it engulfed the whole truck. So sorry about that. All right, guys, let me get on up out of here. I'm about to roll out. Y'all take it easy. I'll come back at y'all in another video. Peace. Woohoo.